Every year in the NFL, it's a new team. As far as goals go, we have one. Putting a f***ing ring on our finger. Welcome to the Buccaneers Observer Podcast. This is Ralph Phillips. I'm Molly Bad. Today is today's just an awesome day. I'm gonna put. It, I don't care what day it is. Today is uh, March third, twenty twenty one. March ninth. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Where did I get March third from? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be one of those podcasts. Mm-hmm. March ninth, twenty twenty one. Where are we? What year is it? <laughs> Does it matter? No. We got some good news for you today. We have a great podcast ahead of you. Levante David and Chris Godwin are staying Buccaneers. We're going to discuss that a little bit further. Uh, We've got a free agency we're going to go over. And uh, before we do that, we got some fact checks and follow-ups. How about that? All right. Let's do it. Okay. Ralph has been working very diligently. (laughs) Molly, Molly taught me a new technique to do the fact checks and follow ups. And, you know, it's like uh, you listen to the podcast and then she just writes down the questions and stuff she needs to do as she's listening to them. What I would do is I would stop the podcast, go research everything and then start it back up. Just so inefficient, Ralph. I'm I just so I just can't <laughs> believe I'm listening to well, what's coming out of your mouth here, right now. Here's why <laughs> it's not that efficient. <laughs> It's because after I'd finished listening to the podcast and getting all the questions, and I did this last week, and I was or like halfway through, you were like, why are you doing it this way? So I was like, okay, got all the questions and all the stuff I needed to get information for. And I was like, all right, good job, good job. And uh, closed everything out. And then today I was like, yeah, I'm ready for the podcast. Went and looked at my notes. I had not answered a single one of the questions. <laughs> All I had done was written down the questions and you hadn't answered. You knew what the question was. Yeah, I was like, "Oh no!" So I spent the past half hour getting all this stuff together. But see, it only took you a half hour <laughs> rather than like three hours that you were doing before. Yeah, okay. so that's kind of a win. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it any way we can get it. All right, follow up. How many sacks did we allow in 2019 compared to 2020? Because we had talked about how Jameis Winston is that was absolutely horrible. He would get happy feet and phantom pressure and run around. And I, I said he accounted for quite a bit of our sacks. And that's why I said our offensive line would be top 10 minimum, most likely top five, because Tom Brady is so good at getting rid of the ball whenever he sees or feels pressure coming. And sure enough, that's what happened. Well, here's, here's how it was. In – uh, 2019, we got 47 sacks by our defense, okay? In 2020, we got 48. So we only got one more sack this year than we did last year. That's mm-hmm. not including the postseason. So defense stayed about the same. And that's interesting because, you know, Shaq Barrett was 19 and a half sacks last year, and he was down, what, eight this year? Yeah. Or nine, somewhere in that area. So it just goes to show that everybody else kind of filled in for him well in 2020 we had 20 the offensive line or the offense gave up 22 sacks 20 of them were on brady one of them was on uh, gabbard the i think he had nine snaps and one of them was a sack in 2019 Jameis winston accounted for all the sacks and he got sacked 47 times whoa He got sacked the same amount as our defense got sacked. So he basically nullified our defensive sacks. That's just crazy. That is a ridiculous number of sacks. Yeah. Yeah, That's huge. That's 25 less sacks just by flipping at your quarterback. Wow. And then we halved the number of interceptions, too. How many did we have in 2019? It was 30. Yeah. Yeah, less than half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. That just goes to show, man, (laughs) quarterback can make a huge difference on a team, especially when his name is Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. All right, follow up. We had asked, where did Jeremiah Ledbetter come from? Well, 
He was drafted by the Detroit Lions in the sixth round, 205th overall in the 2017 NFL Draft. Wow, okay. Yeah, now he played in all 16 games for the Lions in 2017, but he never started. He had 349 snaps with them. That's a good number. He was waived by the Lions September 2nd, 2018, right before the season started. We snapped him up the next day and added him to our practice squad. Now, he's only played 54 defensive snaps total for us. Hmm. Uh, 24 in 2018 in one game, 18 in 2020 this year, week 14 against the Falcons, and 12 snaps week 15 against the Lions. <laughs> so he was drafted by the Lions. We played him against the Lions. I like it. Yeah. Well, to be fair, we did play a lot of our second string guys, so maybe that's what yeah. it was. Yeah. He was, they, we, we probably put him out there as a captain, too. That'd be I know. That'd be awesome. I love it when teams do that. <laughs> I know. Psychological warfare. <laughs> All right. Follow-up. We'd asked, how far ahead was our run defense compared to second place last year? Okay. We were way ahead. I mean, we, really? We, <clears throat> yeah. In 2020? Or 2019? Mm-hmm. Okay. 2020. In 2020. Gosh, I, felt, I thought New Orleans was, like, right behind us. but They were in one category. I'll get to that. Okay. Uh, we led the league in yards per attempt with 3.6 yards per attempt. Now, second place was the Indianapolis Colts. Or uh, is it Indianapolis? <laughs> Colts. What team is it? Yeah. The Baltimore Colts. Yeah. Or, and, uh, good they, Lord, Ralph, still? what year is this, really? <laughs> I'm starting to get concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where you are? Oh, my goodness. Do you I know who you are? about a lot of people here. Right? <laughs> if you watch the news. Some scary stuff going on in the top levels of our government. Okay. So uh, first downs allowed by rushing, we allowed 78. 78 first downs by rushing all year long. That's incredible. Just as a... Total? Yes. Second place was the Saints. They allowed 85. Uh, Total yards, 1,289 is what we allowed Second place was the Colts at 1,448. Wow. That's a 159-yard yard difference. Yards per game, we were first with 80.6 compared to the second place, which was the Colts again, at 90.5. Wow. They, that's a 10-yard difference. Now, that's a huge disparity. As an example, the difference between second and third place wasn't even a yard. It was 0.8 yards, mm-hmm. and that's generally how it went. All the way until you get down to 29th place, the Bengals were 13 yards worse than the Lions, who were in 28th yard, 28th place. So we had the second largest deficit at first place, between first place and second place, and then 28th place and 29th place, there was a 13-yard deficit. Uh, the Texans were worse at 160.3 yards per game allowed rushing. Whoa. So. Cool. From first place to 32nd place, we doubled. We were twice as good. We allowed 80 yards. They allowed 160. That's a huge disparity, man. That's how good our rush defense was. Okay, speaking of our rush defense, we had asked, when did Vita Vea come back? It was during the NFC Championships against the Packers. Which is apropos because that was the first game he missed mm-hmm. last year after he mm-hmm. got hurt. So uh, he came back in the NFC Championship game, and then he played the championship game in the Super Bowl. Really? I gosh, and it see, is so weird how this stuff just. <laughs> but I mean, it has literally been a month since Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and I We're could not tell. Stuff. I know. Yeah. Well, we watched it the other night, uh, which. We I see. I, I can't even remember what game we watched. Well, we got into. Uh, I don't know if any of you have the Roku, but oh, we used the NFL app on the Roku, and we might have been a little inebriated and could not get through the stupid menu. <laughs> it like auto plays. It was just looping. It was just looping, and neither one of us could get the remote <laughs> to work to fix it. <laughs> yeah, the I shouldn't admit that the but, developers for the Roku app. For the NFL <laughs> Game Pass, did they? Did somebody needs to seriously sit down and talk to those guys? I I counted it. It took it took twenty six uh, button presses to get to a game. 
It's, it's just ridiculous. And you get lost. It's so really bad. a mess. Yeah. And if you're not completely all there, you'll spend three hours <laughs> just watching <laughs> The it menu was, on loop. <laughs> well, it just automatically starts playing your team's, like the 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 most uh, current videos that the NFL dot com has. Normally, it's the press conferences, and they're mm. really loud. Mm-hmm. Like the volume is all messed up. Yeah, it just automatically starts playing as soon as you open the app. Yeah, and then you can't, and it's like you can't not listen to it. Like it'll force you to listen to it as you're looking for other stuff that's playing behind whatever you're looking for. It's just awful. It is. It's really horrible. But again, so eventually you know, we got to the Washington game, and then we were both like <laughs> <laughs> asleep, basically. Yeah, if that's what you want to call it. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, follow up. What is Sue's post-game routine? We had talked about Adamakan Sue. He was on with uh, Shannon Sharp's show, his podcast. And he was talking about Aaron Rodgers, how Aaron Rodgers wanted to talk to him after the game. He did end up talking to Aaron Rodgers. He went up to him after the NFC Championship game and said, said uh, maybe we'll get together during the offseason. Mm-hmm. But uh, he was like, Look, I've got my after game routine, and Aaron Rodgers. It was like he expected me to go to his locker room and talk to him. I wasn't going to do that. So we had, we were like, "What was his his after game routine?" Well, apparently he's got like a Peloton bike. He rides immediately. Mm-hmm. He does that to keep his to keep his legs fresh. He says for practices coming up, whatever. And then he does a uh, ice tub. Yeah, he does a bike in a tub. Okay. So he's just a glutton for punishment. I know. I'm just... it, it works. I mean, the guy's never missed a game due to injury. It's just incredible. I've yeah. seen those people. Have you seen videos of the people who cut the hole in the ice, and yeah. then they get in there? Why? I don't. I don't understand. Can someone explain that to me? Comment below. Stressors. I don't get good it for you. Mm-mm. It's like people who take cold showers. I used to take cold showers. I did that every day. I took a cold shower for four years, and it works. I mean, it wakes you up, and it. It definitely gets you ready for the day, but man, I tell you what, I love my warm showers, man. I do rinse my hair with cold water, so that is kind of right, but I don't. You don't stand under it. No. Uh -uh. No. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, this next one is a follow-up and a fact check. You had asked, why did Carlton David miss three games last year? Uh, It was a groin injury, but Mm -hmm. he only missed two games. He missed okay. week 16 and 17. Okay. All right. It is weird how this stuff just flies by mm-hmm. yeah. and then I can't remember anything. And you've got sports guys out there who m- know everything. They memorize everything. They could tell you every play from 50 years ago. That's just amazing to me because I do. I have a hard time from week to week remembering what's going on. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It makes it, it makes it half the fun for me. Mm. Short memories. So, like, when it's going bad, you're like, oh. Be like a goldfish. I know, yeah. like a goldfish, <laughs> yes. exactly. As Buccaneer fans, we have to be yeah. like goldfish. <laughs> All right. Which, that's from Ted Lasso. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to bring this up. We had brought, we had talked about it in the last podcast, but Ted Lasso, if you haven't seen that, watch it. Great series. Highly recommend it. Uh, it's about soccer, but it's a football coach that ends up <laughs> coaching a soccer team over in Britain. It's it's great. It's fantastic. Really good stuff, man. Casting was spot on. It just it just it was such a fresh fresh uh series. You know, me and Molly have talked about this how production over the past decade or so, production has been dominating everything. Even the music industry, it's all about the production. You know, the same producers produce all the top music. Everything sounds the same. Everything's canned, focus grouped, all that good stuff. Uh, movies are like that. You know, it's all about the CGI and the beauty and the good looks. The cinematography, you know, they're, they're like the dominant force. But this was like low production, all story, all character, good themes. It, it's really good. Good show. Highly recommend it. So it, go watch that and you'll know what we're talking about when we say goldfish. Okay, the next one's a fact check. I said Levante David is the only non-liked player, non-Jason Light player on our team. I was incorrect. This one shocked me. I was actually surprised by okay, this. Okay, wait. Let me think about take this. A, take a guess. Okay, hold on. 
Is it Goldston? Yep. Ha, ah, good job. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's like the second, the one of our longer tenured buccaneers. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Light was hired January 21st, 2014. William Goldston was drafted in 2013. Oh. I'll take David in 2012. Gosh, he's been did, here for eight I years. Know. That's crazy. But, yeah, but then I remember fighting with people back in the day about, you know, Golston's a good player. You know, everybody was talking about we need to get, you know, it's no big deal if we didn't sign Oh, they whatever. constantly are. Like, Golston is one of those that is always on the chopping block, too. Mm-hmm. It's like Cambrite. Like, everyone always talks about cutting Golston. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. Uh, interesting, though, I was looking it up. I was like... 14 of our 22 starters were ja- drafted by Jason Light. So that's 64%. Uh, they were drafted? Drafted So by then Jason the others Light. were free, the free agents? Mm-hmm. Uh, 25 of our roster was drafted by Jason Light. That's minus the Golston and David. Uh Compared to 20 players who we've gotten in free agency, now that leaves 16 players. We've got 16 undrafted players on our team. I did not know that. Yeah, that's pretty good. So uh, Jason Lang has contributed greatly to this just in the draft. And he's still doing it today. Yeah. Fact check. I said that our kicker, Ryan Suckup, did not miss any kicks in the playoffs. That was incorrect. He missed an. He had an extra point blocked during the Washington Wild Card game. Other than that, though, he was perfect. Uh, Twelve for thirteen on extra points and nine for nine on field goals in the playoffs. That's what matters. That's what matters. Yeah. Uh, follow up. You had asked who our holder was uh, last year and the previous years. Uh, last year it was Bradley Pinion. So he held this year and last year. And before that, it was Brian Anger. So our punters have always been um, our, okay. or have, have been our kickers for a decade. Or yeah. our holders for a decade. Cool. Okay. Still going on with these follow ups. Got wow. one more. <clears throat> we gotta quit asking so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> or at least answer them while we're doing the podcast. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like it this way of doing it where I don't we're, have to do them. We're 18 <laughs> minutes in and we haven't even started the podcast. We're just doing it. But this stuff's fascinating. I love, you know, going back and finding out all this stuff. Okay. We had talked about Kellen Winslow Jr. I'd said he got a 14 year sentence and we would ask, when was that going to happen? Well, because of COVID and everything, it, it, stuff got delayed. Uh, it happened March 3rd, 2021. Uh, okay. He got a plea deal. He got 14-year sentence. This was the maximum allowed under the plea deal. Now, Winslow was convicted of forcible rape, rape of an unconscious person, assault with intent to commit rape, indecent exposure, and lewd conduct in public. A juror has also convicted Winslow of two misdemeanors, indecent exposure and a lewd act in public. Uh, and this was involving two separate women. Now, you remember when we were covering all this stuff a couple of years ago when it first came out, I mean, it was just everywhere. There was stuff. And, and then while he was out on bail, he was still doing stuff. So there was like a total of like six, eight women that did this. Now, the, how can you let a deviant like that out in 14 years? Like, are you kidding me? There is some serious psychological issues there that prison is not going to. Probably going to exacerbate. Yeah. 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 That rhymes with. Masturbate, mm-hmm. he, he was, was quite doing. famous for in the mm-hmm. locker room. Uh, well, that's what he did to the old lady in the hot tub. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, while he was on, he covered up his so ankle disgusting. bracelet with a towel. Ah. Uh, now, the jury that convicted him of the two misdemeanors, they failed to agree on other charges, including the alleged rape in 2018 of a 50-year-old hitchhiker and the 2003 rape of an unconscious 17-year-old high school senior who went to a party with him when he was 19. Mm. Now, the his defense attorney tried to say that, you know, CTE and all that mess. Stop it. But no. But here he is when he was 19, he was raping people. Yeah. So, uh, now, Winslow must also register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. So there we go. Weird dude. Weird oh, dude. And uh, on that horrible note, that wraps up the follow-ups and fact checks. <laughs> okay. 
40 minutes long. <laughs> Good Lord. A third of our podcast mm. is correcting ourselves. <laughs> 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 okay, good stuff. Good. We have great, fantastic news. The, the news that just shocked me. Great. Mike Greenberg, who is our salary cap guy. He does our the Lord contracts. and Savior, Are Mike they, Greenberg. Man, this guy is a genius. He is a genius. I, I'm actually surprised he hasn't been snagged for general manager position. I know, or but this is like probably one of the perks for the Bucks. Yeah. yeah. Where we go under the radar because, I mean, it is like a double-edged sword. Like players like Levante David never get the love, but they also don't get snatched up. Mm-hmm. So it mm-hmm. goes for our. So for so long, we haven't really cared about that because we've been bad. Right. So we're like not really worried about our. We got to overpay these people to stay, and no one else really wants them either. <laughs> uh, well, I, yeah, I was thinking about that. When was the last time we lost a player due to salary cap? And I can't remember. The last person I could think of was Michael Bennett, defensive end. We lost him in, what, 2011? And, no, 2012. Yeah, 2013. Ah, there's, was, so, there we go. Another another uh, fact-checked and follow-up. I know. Okay, Molly just did a <laughs> real-time Fact check for us. We lost Michael Bennett in 2013. He went to the Seahawks. Now, the issue with him was his contract was up. He said that he was going to give us the right of first refusal, which means anybody who offers him a contract, he was going to take it to the Buccaneers and say, can you all match this? If you do, I'll stay here. Well, he didn't do that. He just went to the Seahawks. It was a total mess. We lost a good player for that. Uh, but that's the last one I can remember where I went, you know, that was a screw up in the front office. Uh, you know, we lost a good player due to money or whatever. Uh, it, it, it was hard to distinguish because at that time, that's when Shiano came in and he was clearing character issue people out. So we don't know if Bennett wanted to leave. That's, that's what Kellen Winslow was kicked out to. Oh, what a. What a clown show of characters we had there, didn't man? When you look back on it, all the druggies and uh, stripper aficionados and uh, uh, sexual assaulters. Oh my god, man! That locker room must have been crazy. Mm-hmm. It's nice for the media to, to Stay report on, top on of that. that. Yeah. yeah, good lord. So yeah, Mike Greenberg has just done fantastic he's been would you call him our lord and savior yes he's been great and he pulled off another one now i personally and i said this in the podcast i just didn't see how we were going to keep levante david because you know if we keep levante david then that means we're going to have to get rid of some other people you know uh, godwin or barrett or because levante was going to command a lot of money and we just don't have that much money to be tossing out to everybody. And a yeah. lot of teams want Levante David. From I it, had no idea he was so coveted. Like, yeah. I had seen Joe Buck's fans reporting about the Browns wanting him. Mm-hmm. And the Redskins were hot after him, too. And when I was doing research for the free agency breakdown for the Buccaneers, Pro Football Focus had him ranked as, like, the number 10 free agent out of 100. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, for him to be in the top 10 just completely blew my mind, caught me by surprise. Because, you know, he's he's aging. He's not old, but, you know, he's getting up there. I think he's 31, 32. He plays in, in a certain type of system, you know, a certain position. I don't know how in demand a linebacker, an inside linebacker like him is going to be. Mm-hmm. Like how many... But, players yeah. or how many teams are looking for that mm-hmm. and need one who's elite you know right. I, I don't know what's what's the market for that apparently it's pretty big pretty high. I, know it, I know so and he just flies under the radar so often i'm just used to him being overlooked yes well <clears throat> we did not want him to go to the free agency market to even test it out so we re-signed him today i think that was about what three o'clock four o'clock somewhere yeah. in the area uh, it, and, and it is a, man, I tell you what, this is just, it's a genius. It's genius. What we did is we signed him to a two-year contract for it's 25. It's an extension, technically. To, for 25 years. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's actually a five-year extension. 
but it's a two-year, $25 million deal with $20 million guaranteed. Mm-hmm. But what they did is the last three years are void. There's no contract money for the last three years, which means they can spread that $25 million, or that $20 million, $25 million over five years on the salary cap. So the, his this year his salary cap number is what three point five million. Mm-hmm. I mean that's just what I know. That's a, we're, we're paying him less coming up than we were last year. And they're saying that uh, even if we were to avoid his contract later, like the dead cap hit is not that yeah, much. It's, it's going to be like three four million dollars. Which I'm it's like genius. What? Do you do? He's a magician. Yeah, I think the rest of the league is looking at that one going, whoa, we could do that? <laughs> and th- Mike Greenberg is – I mean, that's great. You know, that f- re-signing Levante David freed up like $10 million on our salary cap because we were paying him, what, $10, $12 million? Let me see if I have a – Oh, I don't have a salary from last year. His market value on SpotRack was twelve point seven million. Right. But they also had him listed as an outside linebacker, which just really annoyed yeah. me. But so so anyhow, instead of his salary cap, his number, his salary hurting our salary cap this year by re-signing him, it actually helps us. And now David did this too. I mean, he obviously wants to stay in Tampa Bay, and that's a that's a great sign for what's coming, you know, for everybody else. Yeah. Mm. He he made ten million last year in twenty twenty with the Bucks. Okay, so he made ten million last year. This year he's basically gonna count three point five million to our salary cap. And that's what man. That free how do you sign somebody like him and free up seven million dollars? I don't Just, even really wow. understand what they did. I don't I don't understand. <laughs> really I have does. no idea what's happening. <laughs> That's why this guy, the Greenberg is just so good at this, just wheeling and dealing, man. I was surprised. I thought that Levante would want to stay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He made comments earlier in the week where he said, you know, he's just kind of sitting around, hanging out, waiting to hear from his agent. You know, he just leaves that to his agent and then lets his agent get back to him. And so I really thought, again, with him being so overlooked in the league and he's never gotten a lot of attention, this would have been the first time in his career where he was receiving appreciation from the rest of the league. So I thought that he might, you know, want to test out the free agency a little bit, or he might um, cherish that recognition a little bit more, or, you know, he would want to savor being in that position because he never has been thus far in his career. But nope, he's signed, re-signed with the Bucks. Immediately, yeah, it, it's, it didn't even didn't even dip a toe in the free agent market. No, that's just incredible. I, I was shocked. I was literally like, "Whoa!" And but this came after we announced the franchise tag for Chris Godwin today. Now this one, I'm kind of like, "Ooh, that, that, you know, we, we expected it, but Chris Godwin, Ish, kind of, yeah, Chris Godwin and Shaquille Barrett both." had said in the past couple of weeks that they were going to test the free agent market. Yeah, that's what we heard. Uh, well, I think Joe Buck's fan was reporting it, that both of them want to go to free agency. Just but, to test it out. Just to test it. But Chris Godwin had already said that if the team tagged him, he would be open to playing under the tag. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, so it's not that big a deal. He's he's not going to be pissy about it. Yeah, and we still have time. I mean, you can just because we tagged him doesn't mean that we can't get him a contract also. Right. So it could happen still. But the... His market value per spot rack was seventeen point one million, and under the tag, he would be getting sixteen point five million, which is what Mike Evans. That's what his cap hit is in twenty twenty one. So we are paying two receivers thirty two million dollars, thirty three million. Now, an interesting thing that I realized is that Brashard Perriman is available 
Really? And, yeah. And I was thinking, wow, if we lost Godwin, I'd love to have Richard Perryman back. I mean, he really, he really took off at the end of 2019. Yeah. Made some great plays. And he knows the system. And, you know, he'd have Tom Brady throw it to him. So, you know, of course, that's going to help him a little bit. Uh, but, you know, we got Godwin. We got Godwin back. I wouldn't mind seeing Bashar Perriman come back, though. I am. It is interesting to see where the team's priorities are. You know, they do. Well, Godwin, they had to tag because the deadline's today. Yeah. So, you we, know. Everybody was expecting the deadline to get delayed, though, because they have they still haven't come out and said what the salary cap is going to be. I know, which is, I was just looking for that. And I went on Spot Rack to see if I could update my numbers, and their website is crash. I don't know what's going on. So, could well, you figure it out? There's speculation that the, uh, the NFL just signed a new TV deal, which is going to be huge. It's going to be a big thing. The one and with so, ABC. I'm not. I'm not sure who it is with, but this year they're they're supposed to maybe Direct TV. Yeah. I know. Uh, I think Direct TV's contract is up this year. Not sure, but anyhow, speculation is a big TV deal that was done. This is all speculation now, and that's why Dak Prescott was signed yesterday for such a huge amount because. They're expecting the salary cap to be a lot higher than the 100, 180, 185 million. Mm-hmm. Now, the NFL did come out and say it will be at least 180 million. So we know it's going to be that. It might be up to 200 million. We don't know. But the, no, but the, the teams aren't sure right now what their salary cap is going to look like. So, and they were expecting the, the franchise tag to be delayed you know, for the lead to set out, but they didn't. So we went ahead and tagged. Quite a few people were tagged today. I think about 12. Mm-hmm. Um, the Saints, they tagged uh, their tackle. No, I thought their safety. Oh, yeah, safety. It was uh, Carolina. Carolina tagged yeah. their tackle. Tagged their tackle. Tater, Totem, whatever his name is. Mm-hmm. And uh, Atlanta didn't tag anybody. But, you know. Moten. 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 Where did I get Tater from? <laughs> Taylor. His first name is Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Tater. So close, Ralph. Yeah. Uh, Brashard Perriman, though, he's looking at right around six million, five million, somewhere in that area. But no, no, no. It, I yeah, think we, we can get Godwin. Antonio Brown cheaper. So yeah, if we if we sign Godwin, then we're not going to do Perriman. I yeah. Would think. But who knows? I mean, with the with, with, I was so shocked that we resigned David. But then what does this say for Barrett? See, to me, Barrett is the bigger priority. He was number one in my list of yeah. priorities. Same. I had Ralph. Ralph and I did our priorities for free agency. Shaq Barrett was number one for me. Mm-hmm. And Levante was number five behind Gronk, behind Ryan Suckup, Sue, Shaq. Yeah. yeah. So... uh it, it was it was a little surprising to me that the team prioritized him the way that they did, but and maybe and Joe Buck's fans reporting that negotiations are underway with Shaq Barrett, so that mm-hmm. that's not a done. I mean, he, negotiations with the Buccaneers. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, see, because I do not want him to test the free market. I know me neither. Because he, you know, <sighs> some team's going to break the bank, oh, and yeah. we can't. You know, how much could we do? But well, I mean, look at look at the difference that Khalil Mack made. With the Bears, you know, I mean, they, they made them almost playoff contenders. Just, I mean, he just dominates mm-hmm. over there. Do, <laughs> somebody had put out the statement that John Gruden made when he was asked why he traded Khalil Mack. And he said, well, if we had kept Khalil Mack, we wouldn't have been able to get these players. And he named them all off. The last one was cut today. Every single player that they kept or that they got in getting rid of Cleo Mack, gone. No. Yeah. So did he think about that answer and was like, <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good well, This was back when it happened. So. Oh. Yeah. Oof. Couple Ooh, not a good look, bro. Yeah. That's John Green for you. So do you want to go ahead and go through everybody that we've got? Well, real quick, 
Okay. With the Levante David signing, it was a big deal, especially for Buccaneer fans. You know, us Buccaneer fans, everybody wants Levante David back. You know, I, I was I was literally expecting to be sad for, you know, two, three weeks. So yeah. God, well, I, our I, last I podcast, good. that's what we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. So I'm, I'm totally happy. But here's the weird thing. Ian Rappaport is the one that broke the news. Now, how does this keep happening? Somebody explain it to me. I mean, seriously. Ian Rappaport, he has nothing to do with the Buccaneers organization. The guy probably couldn't even tell you if Levante David is an inside linebacker, an outside linebacker, or whatever. But yet he's the one breaking this news. This happens all the time where these national guys get this the news. And I, I don't know who is it that's telling them, if it's the agents or whatever. You know, do the agents have something worked out so that the – the national media will talk good about their players or say, you know, it's all quid pro quo. But how in the world does the local media not know this crap? You know, they have to get it the same way I do. I I question so much at what value these guys have. Because <laughs> mostly they're just stenographers. They just repeat what, mm-hmm. you know, they're told on the, the podium. I, I can watch the press conference and get the same the better you know i understand context and everything i don't know man it just seems like these guys would have the inside route i mean we've got some of these guys have been on this beat for 30 years doing the buccaneers you know they the glazers know them they're on first name basis but yet they can't get these scoops ah, i just don't what do they do what do they do they're stenographers that's all i can get <laughs> All I know. They ask the questions. And, and most of them are really dumb questions. <laughs> How do you feel? Twenty-minute long questions. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about losing the game? How do you feel about winning the game? How do you feel about dropping that pass? I... Yeah. All right. So, anyhow, you wanted to talk about who we have left. Yeah. Okay. Well, let, let's talk about the money situation. Money, money, Again, money. this is a little outdated, but we've got. Spot Rack is saying they're estimating the salary cap at $184,551,108. Of that, the Buccaneers had about $19 million. Today was signing Chris Godwin to the franchise tag and Levante David, his cap hit. That pretty much takes care of that $19 million, so we don't have any money left. No way. <laughs> he he ta- we Like I explained, he just... Dropped seven million off the cap hit this year. I know it's incredible. I, it's it. yeah. They're gonna. Uh, I'm completely <laughs> confident they're gonna do some kind of voodoo, and we're gonna get everybody back. Like I'm not as worried about getting Shaq signed now because I'm like, oh, they're gonna make it happen. It's gonna happen. Our dead cap is only eight hundred and twenty-seven thousand wow. dollars, which is high uh, compared to last year. I think we only had like thirty-five thousand. Something ridiculous like that. So our active contracts are $164 million. And this is what is concerning to me. Last year, I went back and looked at my podcast prep notes. Uh, or I, I went back and looked at my podcast prep notes from last year's free agency podcast. And we only had 23 free agents last year, whereas this year we have 30. Hmm. So, you know, that's kind of an issue. We did go ahead and wrap up our exclusive rights free agents. We got them signed. That was Pat O'Connor, uh, Jeremiah Ledbetter, the long snapper Zach Triner, and then one more. I can't remember who it is. So we've got them wrapped up. Uh, those you be- – oh, uh, Tanner Hudson. Let's see who that was. Oh, we re-signed Tanner Hudson? Yeah, he's exclusive rights free agent. So hmm. oh, basically, you just have to give them a minimum offer and they got to take it. <laughs> take it. <laughs> and I think it's when you're, um, oh, I have the, I have the definition here somewhere. It's like you have to have less than, yeah, any player with fewer than three accrued seasons and a 
an expired contract. If his original team offers him a one-year contract at the league minimum based on his credited seasons, the player cannot negotiate with other teams. So we took care of some, but Mike Greenberg and Jason Light, they've been busy today. It's, they, it's incredible. They took care of all those. <clears throat> they got Lamonte it, David covered. And it, and it won't surprise me if, and we talked about this, if Mike Evans, uh, Ali Marpet, Donovan Smith, Tom Brady, if all these guys don't restructure their contract to just give us a crap ton of cap space mm -hmm. so we can sign anybody we want. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about Tom Brady. And I want to go, if you're not aware, Dak Prescott just signed a, what was it, $165 million. Who the hell is paying him that much money <laughs> in their Dumb right Jerry freaking Judd. mind? Aren't they, I just couldn't Insanity. believe that number. Yeah, it's like he's going to get $35 million this year and $40 million next year and I think $125 million guaranteed. It's just, it's, it's unfathomable. It really is. He's making more than Tom Brady. Now, we looked into this years ago at Tom Brady. He's always about, you know, he he's like in, in the top 10 of players, quarterbacks getting paid, but he's never number one. You know, he's – and he could be. He could be. He could go to Washington and they'd probably pay him $100 million this year. They'd field seven people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know how many teams would just give him so much money? I know. Yeah. Just, just to get fans in the stands. Hell yeah, we would have. Yeah, right. know. But he's getting about what most, you know, good quarterbacks get, you know, 20, 25 million. And, no, I mean. Which is what we were talking about James Winston was going to get. I 20, know. It was like. And. You know, you get these guys like Dak Prescott who are going to make $30 million, or Matt Ryan who's making $30, $35, $40 million, or Drew Brees, you know, who's every year is making these huge amounts of money. And you get these quarterbacks that just make gobs amount of money. And you got Tom Brady who every year restructures his contract, take less money so that the team can stay together or that they can get new players and everything. And then all these quarterbacks and, and fans sit around and go, I don't understand why Tom Brady keeps winning. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean – he shows complete selflessness, you know, and a dedication to the team. You don't get that with most quarterbacks. You no. know, if I was a Dallas Cowboy, I'd be furious right now. I'm like, Dyke Prescott, really? He didn't even play last year, and you're going to give him $35 million. Oh, my God. I forgot he did not play. Yeah, it's What insane. are they doing? Insane. Uh, yeah, the most Tom Brady has ever made in a season is $31 million. And that was in 2013. And that was with probably, the Patriots. And that was probably after, you know, that was probably the tail end of his contract. And before that, he was probably making 15 million a year, 20 million a year. Yeah. Well, that that was after he had been with the team for 13 years. Yeah. You know? And yeah, before that, he had made 12 million, 10 million, 26 and a half million. That was like the highest before. Yeah, but every other year, besides before the twenty six and a half million, it's like single digits. Hmm. Oh, he's got two years. He made sixteen million each. But yeah, I mean, he he never thirty one million is the most he's ever made in a season, and that was once. Hmm. Yeah, I I think we did this back with uh, Gerald McCoy. That Gerald McCoy made more money almost every year than Tom Brady did. And that was just, I was just like, whoa, what the, how in the world does that even happen? Um, this, sidebar, we're not getting Gerald McCoy. Y'all stop that. Which, stop it. You know, Don't mean, you speak that evil into the world. <laughs> I know. Everybody, you know, not everybody, but I, the media is definitely pushing it. Oh, God. You know, it's a, every single site's got an article about, you know, Gerald McCoy wants to come back to Buccaneers and then they list all the nope. stuff he did with the Bucks. And then they're like, he would be a great addition, you know. No, like, he wouldn't. Yeah. He had. No, that was the first thing Bruce Arians did when he got here was got rid of Jerry McCoy. So that, that says dude, something. The dude had 10 years of chances. And to, was on some of the worst defenses we've ever fielded. So, yeah, just y'all stop. I will say. Of course, you uh, could say the same thing about Levante David, too, but. It's different. <laughs> different. Uh, Gerald looked very lean. Very skinny. 
Is yeah. What it looks like. Well, I I thought he still looked pretty cut, but he looked a lot leaner than he has in years it's past. That vegan diet he's on. And well, it, he's been sitting around for a year. Yeah, he's he he's just now injury. getting to where he's running. Ooh. And I've never understood that. What, what he had a oh, it was a quad. Quad. Injury. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so he couldn't run. Yeah. But man, you know, it just stop. He's not. I'll be upset if he comes back. I will too. And I'll yeah. really question their judgment, but I, he's not coming back. Yeah. Every, there's even a thing on NFL.com about it. And let me, let me ask you this. When was the last time you heard of a player who's, who's never been to the playoffs, who was on a, a one in 16? Well, no, when we got James Winston, we were two and 14. Mm-hmm. You know, and he was been on like one winning team, two winning teams maybe in his, his career. Didn't play all last year, but yet he's getting interviews. How? What? I mean, what? How do I don't understand it? And everybody's writing articles about him. You know, I do understand it because he's a media person, and the media loves him because he will talk to anybody with a microphone. So he's not coming back. He's not coming back. But yeah, I mean, everybody's got NFL dot com. All the local media guys. It's. It's everywhere. Why? I mean, why would we? I don't know. I just, no, no, thank you. Hard pass. Stop it. Yeah. And he said something in the interview. It was a serious XM interview. He said that there wasn't bad blood between them. He said, everybody thinks it's, uh, they got rid of me or I left, but it wasn't that. And he didn't explain any of it. He was just like, there's no bad blood. I talked to him, and everybody thought that I went to Carolina to, uh, you know, get revenge on him. But if anybody knows me, I would never do that. Football's just not that important. Blah, blah, blah. But he didn't explain anything. You know, like what? You know, so okay, why did you leave? You know, what to tell us the story behind that? Don't just tell us that everybody was wrong. Tell us why. Ah, uh, you know. But I think. Back in, let me see, when Jerry Jones bought the Dallas Cowboys, there was a stipulation that he had to fire Tom Landry. Now, the guy who originally owned the Dallas Cowboys couldn't fire Tom Landry. He just couldn't do it. Tom Landry was more powerful than he was politically and, you know, with the fan base. And uh, he just didn't have it in his heart. So when he sold the team to Jerry Jones, one of the stipulations was that Jerry Jones had to fire Tom Landry. That Terry Jones came in, fired Tom Landry, got Jimmy Johnson in there, boom, we know the story. Uh, Because Tom Landry was absolutely horrible at the end of his run. I kind of feel like it was the same way with Bruce Arians and Gerald McCoy. You know, Gerald McCoy had more political clout than the Glazers did, than Lovey Smith did, than definitely than Cutter did. You know, I mean, he was anointed in 2012 as the leader of this team, you know, the, the franchise player, although he hadn't done anything up to that point. And, you know, he gained a lot of, you know, the media was 100% behind him and everything. And the Glaciers knew that if they got rid of him, it was going to be an issue. And I think when, you know, they talked to Bruce Arians and he was like, well, no, I want to get, get. Bruce Arians had an interview when he first, signed and when he said he said we want accountability and he went through a list of things and he said there's some players here who God, what was it who are uh, more about themselves than the team or something like that and i was like he's going to get rid of gerald mccoy and sure enough he came in he got rid of gerald mccoy that was the first thing he did and i you know i think that bruce Arians just doesn't like him as a player you know i don't think he's good for the locker room because bruce Arians. Bruce Arians really likes his players, his veterans, to be leaders in the locker room. You know, JPP, uh, uh, Dom Kong Su, Tom Brady, you know, these guys, he expects them to be extra coaches in the locker room. And he's made no bones about this. You know, he wrote a book about it. And Jeremy McCoy just wasn't that type of guy. And he doesn't like that. So I, I don't think as long as Bruce Arians is here, Jeremy McCoy won't come back, unless it's for a one day deal to retire. That's the best he's going to hope for. You never know, though, man. You never know. Crazy world. I, I just don't see it happening. It's just. But, you know, 
He went to the Panthers, our rival. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, he could have gone to Cleveland or Baltimore or Mm -hmm. uh, all these other teams, supposedly. But instead, he chose the Panthers, our rival. Okay. But yeah, everybody's got, I've got like 12 articles here talking about it. I'm like, it's who, just ridiculous. Why is that a thing? Why are, I I mean, who why are we talking about this? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, it's not going to happen. I just don't think it is. Because for it to happen, McCoy would have to set his ego aside. <laughs> you think he's got a big ego? Yes. Yeah. I absolutely do. It's always about McCoy. That's what It's sure. always about McCoy. So it's just, it's not going to happen. Okay. All right, let's talk about some of the guys we do want to bring back, perhaps, mm-hmm. and who we All might see go. Okay, let's. Start. We're going to start with the offense. In our receiving core, which that got all the more interesting after today's news. So we've resigned. We got Chris Godwin back. So then, do you bring Antonio Brown back? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if we can. I agree. I just don't think that there's a big market for Mm -hmm. old receivers with personality issues. So I think that we can get him for a pretty good deal. Yeah, it seems like the only uh, person that can tame Antonio Brown is Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. You know, because, I mean, he went to Oakland and just freaked out. Yeah. You know, after the Patriots. I don't know, man. It just... And I don't think at this point in his career he's expecting to break the bank. I mean, he's made seventy seven million over his career. The most he made was in twenty seventeen with the Steelers, where he made seventeen million. So I mean, he's made his money. And I think he is a realistic well, I would hope that he's realistic about where he is in his career as far as an asking price. So I'm hoping that he can come back. I was pleasantly surprised with him this year. You know, yeah. I had extremely mm-hmm. low expectations. Oh, you were mad. I was mad. You were mad. We Not thrilled him. about this. <laughs> but, yeah, he it worked out. Mm-hmm. I mean, no personality issues or mm-hmm. yeah, like and throwing dildos at babies' mamas or anything. And I am perfectly capable of admitting you know having a change of heart so believe it or not ralph uh jaden mickens is also a free agent i did not realize he is 27 Hmm. he's old uh that's old in football years but he's our returner so i'm not sure i don't i mean i don't think he's gonna you know, cost us a pretty penny. We'll see. And we might want to upgrade at the position. Who knows? Yeah. How, d- how did you like him on the field? Like not uh, doing returns, but as a receiver. Yeah, he was all right. You know, the little bit he got to play. He was yeah. Right. The doink. <laughs> no, that was Cyril. That was oh, Cyril Grayson. Grayson. Oh, he's another one that we resigned. Okay. that we got the... Exclusive rights, free agents. Okay, let's talk about our tight end room. Gronk, I have listed at number five or number four priority behind well, Ryan Suckup. 100%. Gronk isn't going to go anywhere. Either he's going to be with the Buccaneers and Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. And he's going to go where Tom he's Brady He's going to be with Tom. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's not he, He's not going to go to another team with, no matter how much money they offer him. Yeah. But – you know, whether we're going to offer him what he feels like he deserves, I don't know. But I, I think he will. I mean, he, yeah. you know, he's, uh, I think he's just having a great old time. And he, yeah. Wouldn't a, you be if you were him? Like he, He's always having a good time. I know. Too. He always has a good time no matter. Well, he's got a YouTube channel. Did you know that? No, I did not. They're know. called The Gronks. Like, that's the YouTube channel. Is it, is it his family? Yeah, it's Brothers? like the fam. And they have a whole... I, I've never watched it. I mm. saw it, I think, on your suggested the other day. Uh, so he could go and be a YouTube star. He could make money for the rest of his life. Just being Gronk. Just yeah. being Gronk. Yep. Getting sponsorships and mm-hmm. having the YouTube channel and all that. So, I don't know. His market value is $8.5 million, which I'm like, oof. Like, we're already paying Cam Brate, OJ. How much money are you going to sink into your tight end room? Hmm, I but don't know. Yeah. I think, oh, you know, 
maybe he would take a Did, discount to stay. Yeah, he probably would. This uh, this whole cap space stuff is a, it's a it's always a mess every year. Nobody ever understands mm-hmm. it. I don't care what you say. Nobody understands the cap <laughs> stuff, and. This year is especially difficult because we don't know what the ceiling is. Yeah. And it's hard to find information. And it's like on when I'm taking my notes and I go to SpotRike, I have to, I copy down the figures exactly because they'll change them and then not explain why they changed them or how it changed. And you'll never be able to see where you got your number or, you know, what's different. So I like to make sure I get a real time look at what they're calculating speaking of the tight ends you know tom brady threw the super bowl trophy the lombardi trophy to cameron braid and those guys right and mm-hmm. that, that made big news i was not aware that they threw it to somebody to another boat oh they did yeah i saw the video of it the other day i was like how come nobody's talking about that because it was Tom, Tom Brady, Brady that threw yeah. it so apparently the buccaneers were just throwing it from boat to boat <laughs> I didn't see Lombardi Karen get all mad about the other ones. Like, uh, she wanted that apology from Tom Brady. Nobody that's else. That's silly. She's ridiculous. Uh, okay, Au Claire. Anthony Au Claire is also up for free agency. Mm-hmm. I yeah, yeah, I think we could get him for not very much. Like, these guys and Tanner Hudson, you know, they, they don't cost a whole lot, so... I think you bring them back. Yeah. On our offensive Bring back everybody if you can. Yeah, do it. Uh, offensive line, Tanner Hudson except would be here. At the bottom of my I list. I know. <laughs> I'm surprised that he got, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. uh, offensive line, we got Joe Haig, Josh Wells, and Aaron Stinney, and AQ Shipley, but he's a, health, he's a scratch because he has mm-hmm. that neck injury that is career ending so this is kind of a technicality to have him on the list i would scratch everyone but aaron stinney mm-hmm. i yeah. would re-sign aaron stinney because he played well in kappa's absence and i mm-hmm. think you reward that mm-hmm. so he made two hundred fifty thousand last year with i mean seven hundred fifty thousand with the bucks last year so i think you bring him back but joe haig josh wells mm, i yeah. think you upgrade yeah uh, d- bring Donovan Demar Dotson back. Oh, did they? Is he gone? Yeah, from the Broncos. Yeah, he's available. Huh. I wouldn't be mad. I mean, he's a backup. I like him. Heck yeah. Yeah. What's he like? One hundred twelve now. <laughs> I know. He does remind me of a dinosaur. He like probably, he's just so big and lumbering. Yeah, huge. <laughs> is he six foot eight? Maybe? Yeah, six seven. I think. Uh, here we are. We're talking about mm-hmm. not bringing. Jerry McCoy back. But yeah. <laughs> let's bring DeMar Dodson back. Yeah. Well, DeMar is just a different character. At running back. Okay, this one is someone I am certain we're not bringing back, and that would be Leonard Fournette. Yeah. I would like to have him, mm-hmm. but he is like one of the most valuable running backs on the free agent market per spot rack they've got him valued at 8.1 million which you know mm. ba is not going to pay that for yeah, a running back if you're not aware out there ba does not pay big money to running backs mm. He's, he will never carry a fullback and he does not pay running backs big money yeah and of the running backs available like Kenyon drake he's valued at 8.3 million and philip Lindsay at 8.2 million but the rest of the running backs on the free agent market are not close to leonard fordette so i think that he's probably one of the top free agent running backs and particularly with how he played in the playoffs i think mm-hmm. that he's gonna get a lot of looks yeah. on the market yeah, so he'll get, he'll get his money yeah, I think so, too. And I wouldn't really fault him for that because I, I do think he's a starting caliber running back. Yeah. And, and this probably isn't the best position for him with the Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. So, uh, LaShawn McCoy, you know, he said on Pat McAfee that he would see what the Bucks offer and, you know, he may retire. So that's kind of up in the air. I would expect him to retire. I don't think we're going to bring him back and then we've got Kenyon Barner and TJ Logan 
who were both, well, TJ Logan was on IR. Kenny Barner kind of jumped between the active roster and the practice squad. So we would get them pretty cheap. And at quarterback, all of our backups, Ryan Griffin and Blaine Gabbert, are both free agents this year. I don't think that there's going to be a huge market for them on the free agent market because they are kind of old and uh, backup quarterback. So I think that we, we only paid each of them. We paid Ryan $1.6 million and we paid Blaine $1.1 million. So I think if we could bring both of those guys back for like $3 million, let's do it. Yeah, why not? On the defense, at safety, Andrew Adams is the only player we have up for free agency. And he only made $1 million with us last year. So we might be able to bring him back. He's 28, and last year was his highest paid year of his career. So. I, I can't. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, he's a Super Bowl winner, so. You think he might get? He'll be in demand somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Possible. So, but if we lose him, that's always somewhere we could target in the draft. We seem to have some pretty good success there. At outside linebacker, Shaq, he's the only one we've got there. His market value per spot rack is 19.7 million. God. I know. I know. He is the highest. Somebody's somebody's going to pay him twenty two, probably. Yeah, and well, Von Miller he has a an option this year on his contract, and Denver has not yet exercised it. So how much is it? Well, he's set to make eighteen million. Hmm. But I'm not really sure how the option. I think if they just don't exercise it, he becomes a free agent, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so they have until Tuesday to exercise the option. Next Tuesday? Yeah. His market value is $10.3 million, as opposed to Shaq's $19.7 million. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Wouldn't that be so funny if the Denver got rid of Von Miller and they got Jack Bird? Oh, my God. That would be crazy. <laughs> Fans would be like, what? Wait a minute. <laughs> That'd be messed up. <laughs> Um, Bud Dupree with Pittsburgh, his market value is eighteen point two million. So, competing with Shaq on the market, hopefully, will drive his value down a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we talked about Levante. We've also got Kevin Minter, Jack Sitchie, and Dayom Buchanan mm-hmm. up for free agency. So we'll see what happens with them. I don't. But Jack Sitchie, he just he can't stay healthy. No, no, that's that's an issue. And Dayom Buchanan, he didn't even play the full season with us. So right. I don't. And we brought him in after um, midway through the season, right? Mm-hmm. Later on, so. You know, I, I don't know if we'll bring him back. That might. Do you think we target that in the draft? My linebacker. Yeah, it's a good. Yeah, it's a good possibility. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know anything about. <laughs> I know me neither. I don't know what linebackers are out there. Yeah, but it might make sense for us to start looking there and building up that group yeah. while we can. Okay, defensive line. Sue, of course. He's my he's my number two yeah. on my list of priorities. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Same here. His market value is six point eight million, which Pay is him. great. I think that's low. I think he got eight low. eight million with us last yeah, year. Yeah, we right? paid him eight million last year in twenty nineteen. We paid him nine point two five million. So he's taking a pay cut every mm. year. So I don't I don't think seven million is out of the realm of possibility to re sign him. Again, he negotiated on his own last year. He didn't have an agent, so he'll be doing the same this year. Other notable free agent defensive lineman, Kawan Short with Carolina, they cut him. It's $11 million in dead cap from them Ooh, cutting him. Like, what? why would you do that? Why would you do? What are, what are they thinking? Hey, I love it. Great. I know. Panthers, you do love your thing. It. But <laughs> 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 Keeping that rebuild mode. Hopefully, <laughs> that'll go for a couple decades. Yeah. 
And then Daquan Jones with Tennessee, his market value is seven and a half million. So I think it stands to reason we could get Sue for seven or eight million. Hmm. Uh, now, Geno Atkins is out there. Is he? Yes. I didn't even know he was still playing. I know, right. He's been awful <laughs> quiet. Yeah, it's the Bengals. Yeah. yeah. Is he still with the Bengals? Yes, but he's, uh, gosh, I've read somewhere that he's going to sign with, oh my gosh, who was it? Who was it? Who was it? I can't remember. So, anyway. Great breaking news there, yeah. Ralph. That'll be a fact check. Uh, apparently. <laughs> Steve McClendon, he's also up. He made three million last year, but that was also including a million and a half from the Jets. So we didn't actually pay him three million hmm. last year. I don't know. Did we resign him? I mean, it, uh, there's plenty of other people that need to be signed ahead of him. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No kidding. Uh, Nacho, he's up for free agency. Made a million and a half last year. Oh, he's going to make a lot more than that this year with another team. You think so? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, sad. I don't know. I, I didn't think David was going to be here. <laughs> but, I didn't either. I yeah. know. We're bad at this the last couple of years. Our track record is not for predicting all these free agent. Yeah, true enough. At corner, Ryan Smith is up. He actually made my top 10 list because I couldn't think of anyone else. Like, after number six, like, everybody else is kind of a luxury. Mm. So, Ryan made it just for the special teams. So I, I don't know. Like, at corner, me, I don't think you'd re-sign him, but definitely special teams. He's been our stud for a few years, so. Ross Cockrell, he's also up for free agency. Did you know he's been in the league since 2014? No, I did not. Wow. I thought I keep thinking these guys that we bring in are like rookies. I don't know why my brain just goes automatically assumes that. So, but he's not. And Carolina paid him five million in 2018. That's From 2018 great. to 2019, they paid him five million dollars. So, but he only made seven hundred thirty-one thousand with us in 2020. Damn. Yeah. So he's made his money. I think he can take a cut, stay here. I doubt that. I'll probably go somewhere else for more money. You think so? Yeah. We will see. Okay. Our long snapper, Zach Triner, we brought him back. And then we have our kicker, Ryan Suckup. He is my number three priority to re-sign after Barrett and Sue. And... Well, kickers, even if you double their salary, it's usually only like a million dollars extra. <laughs> I know. Well, we paid him a million last year. Yeah. So we give him two. I've never understood why people cut their kicker because they asked for more money. It's like it's a kicker. I know. I mean, what the most the most you're going to pay for a kicker is what four million or something. Right. So, yeah. Well, the other notable free agents are Matt Prater. Remember, he was with the Broncos. He made that like sixty yarder. They made a joke about him on SNL. Mm -hmm. They were like, he, he was Jesus. Uh, Steven Goskowski, he's a uh, Nick Folk, Cairo Santos, Atlanta's kicker, Young Ho Koo, and then Joey Sly. They're all up too. So hmm. there's some competition in the kicker market. But I, I think we'll bring Ryan back. Just makes sense to me. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. Pay them a double his salary. Let's do this. Yeah, from one million to two million. <laughs> <I> <laughs> we can do it. Mike Greenberg, he'll find that money. Yeah. All well, right, that's all I got, Ralph. All right. Well, we've been at this uh, hour and ten minutes. It's time to wrap it up. I had some other news and stuff I wanted to go over, but we'll save that for the next podcast. And we should have one in short order. We're going to go through the Know Your Enemy free agency. So we have until Tuesday to get three in. We're slacking off. It's Ralph's fault, though. It wasn't me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, we said that, that we were going to have this one done Saturday, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, here it is, Tuesday. Tuesday. And it's my yep. fault. 
We're going with that. He didn't object. So. This is we crap. I ain't going with it. <laughs> All right. Uh, you ready to wrap it up? Yes, sir. All right, guys, man, we, we are so happy. we got Levante David back. It looks like we're going to have Godwin back for another year at least. And uh, D- D- Devontae Davis is going to retire as a Buccaneer. Yay! It's awesome. Well, most likely. I mean, it's just great. It's, it's great, great, great news. He'll get up in the ring of honor. You know, eventually. so far, Bruce Arians has kept to his promise, his drunk promise, that everyone's ass was staying in Tampa. So, <laughs> Man, come on, Bruce and Mike. Do, do something with Barrett. Do something with Sue. It's all those drunk promises. You know, you can't break those. That's a breach of contract. It's like pinky promises. You can't break them either. <laughs> yeah. It's the male version, the grown-up male <laughs> version of pinky promises. All right, guys. That's going to wrap it up for us, man. Until next time. Go Bucks.